Hi, welcome to my board game channel, Wall of the Meeple, and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial of Seven Wonders Architects. Let's go! First of all, each player takes their wonder tray, which includes the components for their wonder, and also their cards. They can then open up their tray and set up their wonder, unbuilt side up, following the image shown on the tray. Now, remove the card holder with the cards from the tray, shuffle the cards, and put them back into the card holder, face up. Then place it to their left. These cards will be shared with the player to their left, so should be placed in reach of both players. Place the green progress tokens in a stack, then deal the top three face up. Now, place conflict tokens, based on the number of players, piece face up. And also place the cat token in the middle. Finally, shuffle the central deck and place face down, in reach of all players. Now we can start. In the player's turn, they can draw a card from one of the three piles, their face-up pile, which is to their left, the player to their right's face-up pile, or the central deck, which is face down. There are five different types of cards available. Yellow cards. These are wild card resources and can be used for building your wonder. Grey cards. These are standard resources that are used for building your wonder. Each stage of your wonder will require a number of cards that must be either identical or different. If the stage shows an equal sign, then resources must be the same. But if it shows an equal sign with a line through it, they must be different. And the number of resources required is shown just to the left of this. So as we can see here, this stage requires three the same, whereas this stage requires two different. As soon as you have the cards that will allow you to build your stage of your wonder, you must build it by flipping it over, then discard the cards. The yellow wild cards count as any resource. The stages must be built from the bottom to the top, but if you have any adjacent to each other, these can be built in any order. The stage shows how many points it is worth, and some stages include a bonus action when built. These are explained on your wonders tray. Blue cards are similar to the original game. They give you points. If you draw a card with a cat symbol on it, you should also take the cat token from either the middle or from the player that currently holds it. Whilst you hold the cat token, you may look at the top card of the central stack before deciding where to draw a card from. Green cards. These are science cards, and once you have two of the same or three different, you must discard them and take a progress token, either one of the three face-up ones, or you can take a chance and take the top one off the stack. Each progress token is explained in detail in the instruction booklet. Red cards. These are military cards. If the military card has bugles on it, you must flip over that many peace tokens. Once all peace tokens are flipped over, we have a combat phase. If you have more shields on cards than other players adjacent to you, you gain a plus three token. However, if they have more, they gain a plus three combat token. Once this is done, any combat cards that have bugles on them are discarded, but combat cards without bugles are kept. The game is over once one player builds the final stage of their wonder, and the winner is the player with the most points, made up from the built stages of their wonder, military points, any progress tokens, blue card points, and two points for whoever holds the cat token. So, final thoughts on Seven Wonders Architects. The game is not dissimilar to the original in terms of the types of cards and how they work, but one thing about Seven Wonders Architects is the gameplay is much easier. Whenever I teach Seven Wonders, people always find it extremely complicated for the first few rounds, but with Architects the concept is a lot easier. Figuring out the winning tactics is probably just as hard as the original, as you have various ways of earning points, and deciding which one to go for can always be tough. Overall, it's an enjoyable game. We had a seven player game at Games Night last week, and it went down well with people that have played the original and people that haven't. Hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, don't forget to give me a subscribe. Thanks for watching.